Hi, Carl Winkler here at Electrosonics. We've had a lot of requests to do a quick start guide on Wireless Designer. I recommend that you download the latest Wireless Designer software and any associated drivers for your OS if needed. First, this software can be used offline or unconnected to a system for design purposes or to coordinate frequencies in advance. Wireless Designer can be used while connected to your hardware as well. Let's start with offline mode. First create a new session, then add frames by right-clicking on the session stack at upper left, then choosing the frames you want to add. Once done, click again on the session stack, and we can see all the individual channels in the stack in the main window. If need be, use Control plus or Control minus to expand or contract the view so that everything fits on one tab, two tabs, or whatever is preferred. I usually save my session at this point, then we can come back and do more and we will then talk about frequency coordination. Now, if we connect to our hardware, whatever settings are in those units will override what we're doing here. Likewise, if we already have connected our hardware and open a session file that we've previously saved, it will override the settings in the hardware, if that's what we want. Okay, let's talk about the ways to connect our hardware. The easiest way is usually via USB, so that's what we're going to start with. After we physically connected our units, don't forget to install the USB drivers first, pull down the Connect Live tab and select Connect via USB. We see a list of devices available, and we can click on the Select All button to select all of them, then click OK. Click on the session stack at upper left to see all connected channels. Let's connect via network now. First, make sure the computer and electrosonics hardware are connected through a network switch. Also, for now, we'll enable DHCP in the devices so the IP addresses are automatically populated by the switch. After a reboot, go to the Network Settings page on the device, then go to the Connect Live tab on Wireless Designer and select Connect via Network. Copy the IP addresses into the search window for each device and click Search, and the device should show up. Click OK on that device is now connected. Repeat until your devices are set. Click on the session stack at upper left to see all connected channels. Once everything is connected, I recommend saving a connection list, especially if this is a system we'll use over and over. Later, we can recall that list to connect everything quickly without all the fuss. Now that we've got our hardware connected and talking to Wireless Designer, let's do a scan and see what's in the local RF environment. Go to the Scan tab and press Start. The first unit in the stack will be doing the scanning. We see which one it is because it will turn orange in the system tree. Once all the available frequencies have been covered, press stop, then export to frequency coordination. Now we'll go to the frequency coordination tab and see where our previously selected frequencies fall versus the RF activity in our local area. If we have carriers that are within a strong RF source like an active TV channel, we see those show up as having a conflict. Blue lines are wireless mic channels, red lines are transmitter channels, for instance, Duet Digital IEMs. The fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to get a good frequency list with no conflicts is to set our threshold of acceptance down as low as possible while still keeping empty spaces below it in some parts of the spectrum. Now click on Coordinate Selected Channels. Here, and just like that, the computer will make all the necessary calculations and show us where it thinks the channel should go. Sometimes they may look really close together, but we can drag this bar to zoom in and see that there is plenty of room. The frequency coordination engine will follow the rules for minimum channel spacing, plus calculate for any potential intermods between those channels. If we are setting up our system at one location, but we'll be taking it to a different location for the actual job, and we have a scan from that destination, we can import scan data from file then run the coordination as before. One last thing. If we have equipment from other manufacturers or might need to include some offline equipment, like our older IFB systems, we can create custom channels, give them applicable frequency ranges, and then include them in the coordination. They'll show up as light blue. Now that we've developed a good frequency list for our system based on scan data, let's deploy these settings to our hardware. Click on Deploy to System, then click on the Channels All Frames tab 
to see how the noise floor has fallen on all the channels. From here, we can use IR Sync to send the frequency information to transmitters. Double click on one of the channels to start, go to the Transmitter tab, then click on Send Settings to TX. We should see a confirmation on the transmitter that IR Sync is successful. Now turn on the transmitter RF output, and we should see solid green with the blue link light on that channel. Rinse and repeat for each channel, and we are good to go. Once again, don't forget to save your session to a file so you can recall it later if need be. Okay, that's it for now. I'm Carl Winkler. Thanks for watching. For detailed information on all of our products, firmware history, wireless designer software, and accessories for all Electrosonics products, please visit Electrosonics.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe.